Today, we're gonna to take a quick look at the infrared module for the Xtool D1 Pro. I'm gonna run some test projects, I'll show you my settings, I'll show you the results, and then I'll give my two cents on whether or not I think this module is worth buying. Let's quickly touch on the unboxing installation process. Your module comes in a nice little box containing just two items, the module and a power adapter. This thing is pretty beefy. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison to the standard 20 watt module that came with my D1 Pro. The installation process is simple as can be. Unplug and remove the module that you're currently using and replace it with the IR. Don't forget to swap the power adapters as well. On the software side, I'm using Lightburn, so everything I mentioned as far as settings goes pertains specifically to that environment. The only device setting I had to change in Lightburn was disabling the 16 millimeter offset that is set by default when using the 20 watt module. This step is very important since there is no offset when using the IR module. Wherever your preview dot is, is where the job is gonna start. First test, I wanted to try marking something on this aluminum hard drive I had sitting right here in front of my face on my desk. This is where all my video files go to die after posting on YouTube. And before we get started in an effort to be precise with my words, I'm gonna to try to use the correct terminology between engraving, etching, and marking, because there is a difference and in some industries, it's actually an extremely important distinction. And here is the result. You can see some marking near the bottom. That was me forgetting to turn off the 16 millimeter offset before starting the job. Okay, not a bad start, but let's keep it going. Next up, let's test out etching a design on one of these stainless steel dog tags. You can buy these in bulk on Amazon and are actually a great way to get a little side hustle started in your local neighborhood. And here's the result. No issues, it came out nice and clean, but as we know, stainless steel can be marked with a regular dial laser, so let's keep it moving. For our third test, let's try out a material that's completely off limits for a standard dial laser, and that's solid brass. This is one of my favorite leathercraft knives, let's try to etch something on it. And here is the result. This one actually surprised me a little bit. I didn't think it would perform this well on solid brass. Test number four, sticking with solid brass, let's try etching this brass mallet. I don't know why this shot is so out of focus. My apologies there. And here's the result. Really happy with how this turned out given the circumstances of this mallet shape, which I will talk about a little bit more in the review portion of the video coming up. For my last test, I really wanted to try etching a piece of jewelry since this is largely how this module was marketed to potential customers. I thought about raiding my wife's jewelry stand, but realized I'm wearing something I could try right here. This is a sterling silver pen that you can see the 925 stamped here on the back. I don't wanna just engrave a silly test design on this since I actually wear this thing every day. So I designed a little graphic with my daughter's birthday and birth flower. I don't have any space to run a test, so I'm just gonna jump in, run the file and hope it works out. And here is the result. Looks pretty awesome to me. The surface of the pendant isn't completely flat and we still managed to get some really fine detail etched in a small area directly on sterling silver with no marking spray. Okay, so let me give you my overall thoughts on the IR module after playing with it for the past two weeks and talk about who I think this product is for. First, I will say I was actually surprised how much I enjoyed using this thing. 
I try not to watch any reviews done by other laser YouTubers on most products, so it doesn't influence my review, but I did hear of a couple issues that people had with this module beforehand. The first and probably most important issue being that because the focal length is so short, only one millimeter, it's really easy to be out of focus during a job. And this module requires you to be in near perfect focus to see the best results. Let me explain a little further using this brass mallet I engraved as an example. When I bought this mallet specifically to use for this video demo, I thought the side of the brass head was completely flat. Instead, it's curved like this. I really wanted to do a full end-to-end -end engraving to show its capabilities. However, since the hammer tapers down on both sides, if I focus the laser on the center, like where this Viking character is engraved, the laser would be far out of focus by the time it travels to either end of the hammer. Yes, this would be a problem with most lasers out there. However, you do get a little bit more wiggle room with longer focal lengths. For example, if I did this on my 60 watt fiber laser, I don't think it would be an issue at all. So keep in mind, if you decide to buy this module, make sure you are double and triple checking your focus before running a job. But it wasn't nearly as bad of a process as some people are making it out to be. Other than that, I didn't come across anything that surprised me. The module advertises some pretty fast engraving speeds, but as you saw in my test pieces, I ran everything in the 10 to 20 millimeters a second range with crosshatch, which essentially doubles the time. I'd imagine if you're just marking an item, you could probably run it a little quicker, but when doing a detailed etching on like silver jewelry, it's going to be a slower process with only two watts of power. On the bright side, the good thing about that is you don't have to run extensive material tests. All the metals I worked on for the past week, I ran at minimum 80% power up to 100% for the brass and silver. It's not like you have any chance of engraving too deep with that amount of laser power, so you might as well just crank it. The other saving grace is the size of the designs you'll be etching on stuff like metal jewelry is already pretty small. It's usually initials, dates, maybe a little abstract flower design like I did on my silver pendant. It's not really a lot of ground to cover for your laser, so even if you have to run it at slower speeds, it still only takes minutes instead of hours. Now, let's talk about if you should buy this module or consider something like the X-Tool F1. Let's say you already own the D1 or D1 Pro, you can buy this module for a couple hundred bucks, swap it in place, and dive headfirst into the world of metals. In this scenario, I would definitely consider buying it. You already have the machine, and this will just be a useful extra tool in your toolbox. To me, this product is really for the aspiring fiber laser owner. Having this module installed on your D1 or D1 Pro, you can start learning the process of metal etching without breaking the bank. This is a couple hundred bucks. This, a full-size fiber laser, is about six grand. If you want to be involved in the metal engraving world, you'll eventually want to get something at this level. However, there's nothing wrong with working your way up there. There's plenty of design and setup work you can start learning without a full-size fiber laser. Some of you might be wondering how the IR module stacks up against something like the X-Tool F1. So let's talk about that. The F1 is actually a combination of these two modules in one unit. It's a standard 10-watt diode laser and a 2-watt IR laser. Having both of those options available in the same machine allows you to work with a big variety of materials from wood to leather to plastics to metal. Big downside of the F1 is the working area is pretty small, 115 millimeters by 150 millimeters, which is about four and a half inches by four and a half inches. So if you wanted to do an engraving that's larger than that, the F1 isn't gonna be much help. Here's a quick example. This is an old MacBook I had lying around. Let's pretend a customer wanted you to do a somewhat large etch design on top. This is much too large to fit under the F1. However, using the IR module in my D1 Pro, my working area is much, much bigger and I can easily engrave the whole surface if I wanted to. Also, the main purpose of the F1 is for marking, etching, and engraving only. And it will do those things extremely fast. It's not so much for cutting. It can cut some materials, however, that's not the best use of this style laser. The F1 is basically a little brother to a real Galvo style fiber laser. So if you're starting from scratch and don't own the D1, D1 Pro, or F1, here's how I would make that decision. If you have any interest at all in using your future laser to cut out different varieties of projects, but are still interested in trying some metal etching, go with the D1 Pro in the IR module setup. If you know you just want to do jewelry etching and stuff like I did in the video today, check out the F1 or save up some money and go straight to a real fiber laser. If you're interested in picking up the IR module for your D1 or D1 Pro, I have links to all the products I mentioned as well as everything I use in my laser workshop in the video description below. 
If you do decide to purchase anything from Xtool using my links, the company will shoot me a couple bucks, which helps me pay for everything I have going on here and make more videos. I greatly appreciate the support and will never promote a product I don't think is useful. If you have any questions about the IR module, you can leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help answer it. And as always, thanks for watching.